is great talk of independence, said a loyalist in 1776, and the unthinking multitude are mad for it. A pamphlet called Common Sense has carried off thousands. History. By early 1776, many colonists were already thinking about independence, and still many more were willing to stay loyal to king and country. But even if reforms were necessary, many were not willing to agree to going for full-blown independence. Part of the hesitance to denounce the king had to do with fears of upsetting the social order. If a king could be dethroned, what did that mean for the patriarchal system? After all, weren't husbands and fathers governors of their family? Wasn't the king put in place by God? With so many people unsure which way to lean, Thomas Paine's pamphlet, Common Sense, pushed them into the patriot cause. Paine was a radical Englishman who befriended Benjamin Franklin and adopted Philadelphia as his new home. His background was less than distinguished. He failed out of school, he failed as an apprentice to his father, he was fired from his job in the British government, and he wasn't such a great soldier either, but man could he write. I once heard it said that if Thomas Jefferson provided the romanticism of the revolution, Thomas Paine provided the rage. He wrote his pamphlet to offer, quote, simple fact, plain argument, and common sense. And he set his sights on the ancient tyrannies of aristocracy and monarchy. Common sense appealed to the common people who were finding newfound authority to speak on political and religious matters in the years after the Enlightenment had spawned the Great Awakening. Paine called for independence and a Republican government. The time had come to leave allegiance to the king behind. He called for an end to the traditional political order and insulted King George III using biblical language. He called him the hard-hearted, sullen Pharaoh of England. Most of all, he made a case for American independence. He said, a government of our own is our natural right. Tis time to part. The pamphlet went on to sell 120,000 copies. By the way, this was in February of 1776. And it had multiple printings. All in all, it would sell a half a million copies, which was a staggering number outpaced really only by the Bible. So maybe the pen really is mightier than the sword for Payne, who once speculated whether or not an island could really rule a continent. After the revolution, Payne did not make a lot of friends. He returned to England, but angered them, eventually went to France, was arrested, and really his life was saved by Minister to France and future President James Monroe. President Thomas Jefferson later invited the dishonored Payne back to America, where he realized his reputation was completely sunk, mostly due to his controversial views on religion, Sadly, he died in 1809, at the age of 72, mostly alone and forgotten. But later generations restored his legacy as a man who inspired independence and caused the country to believe when they needed it most of all. Payne's writing helped break the psychological connection that the colonists had felt to the mother country. Ironic that one of America's most agnostic founders helped so many truly believe in the cause. Subscribe for more videos from USA History Guy. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. I was thinking about the pyramids, just like you should be. Hey, let's say a big thank you to Clay for giving a baller lesson on some baller topics. That's what's up. Don't get a chance if you ask him. Also, if you get a chance, Check out Clay at ClayRots.com and subscribe to him on social media. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can learn everything ever and never miss anything ever. Not even a free throw. Seriously, you subscribe to this channel, you will not miss a free throw. And here's the guarantee. If you ever do miss a free throw if you subscribe to this channel, we will give you back all of the money we took from you. Which is nothing. So go ahead and subscribe. Check out Clay. Go ahead and subscribe. Okay. I'll wait.